Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session. Today, we're going to uh, study on two books from the Old Testament. That is the book of Jonah and the book of Micah. Yeah. So even before we could start with the session and others join in, we can start our session with a word of prayer. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Am I audible? Okay, it's good. Okay. Dear God, we thank you, we praise you, we love you. We come into your presence, Lord. Father, as we study on these two books, the book of Jonah and the book of Michael, pray that, Lord, you will, you will cover me and you will speak in for me. You will make these two books very simple that we can understand and we can remember. And Lord, I pray that Holy Spirit come move in the midst of us, no matter from where we are, Lord, out of this class. You will teach us, you will lead us. You will lead us. Thank you, Father, for interpreting every word of us, opening up our heart and mind, that we can understand and grasp your word, that it may dwell as a seed in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we all know the story of Jonah. It's not something very new. Okay, so I just want to know what is our learning from this book? What do we know from the book of Jonah? Is it the story of Jonah or the whale, or is it the story of the people from Nineveh? Uh, I think the importance of being obedient in God's presence. Yes. Yes. Thanks. Thanks, John. You went to the point. Yes, it is important to be obedient to God's voice. It's more than the story of the people of Nineveh. I think it is the story of this one God wants it to be recorded where we can relate ourselves with him. Because it's just not Jonah, it's even B. So let's see. Let's go through this book and see how we can relate us with Jonah. I'll just uh, give you a, sh uh, a short background, a brief background. The name Jonah in Hebrew means dove. So the dove is a symbol of peace. As in the times of Noah, we see Noah sending out this bird from the ark uh, to signal the end of the flood and later we see in the book of Leviticus the doves were used for sacrifice at the temple and later even in the book of Isaiah uh, we see the dove is, uh, symbolizes the one who mourns so in the in the New Testament we see the dove is harmless and also we see uh, that uh, when the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus during the time of his baptism, we see the Holy Spirit came in form of a dove, which, uh, you know, descended upon Jesus. And uh, whoever were present, they, they heard the voice of Father affirming that Jesus was his beloved son. So in the book of Jonah, uh, it's collected as one of the 12 minor prophets of uh, Nevim. Nevim is Hebrew Bible and the book of Jonah has its own right in our Christian Old Testament. Well, um, Jonah lived uh, during the reign of Jeroboam II, where it tells us the Hebrew prophet named Jonah, who was the son of Amittai, who was sent by God to prophesy the destruction of Nineveh, but tries to escape this divine mission and he uh, runs. Now, can we tell why did Jonah run away? Why did Jonah run away from his mission? What made him not to go to Nineveh but go to Tarshish, the land that was far? Or if God asked him to go to east, he ran towards west, totally opposite direction. He didn't want the enemies of Israel to be rescued, uh, like God is, God is um, showing kindness if we, if he, they would repent. So he didn't want that for them to be rescued. Yes, yes, Divya, that's right. 
Yes. It's not that, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jonah didn't have heart for people, but then he didn't want the enemy nation to be rescued. He didn't want. Jonah was okay if God forgives Israel, you know, though he was prophesying to the Israelites, he had seen the prophets prophesying. It was all okay for God to forgive Israel and redeem them. But Jonah, being a prophet, he was not ready to, uh, you know, he could not accept the fact that God wanted to save Nineveh because Nineveh was the capital city of Assyria. And Assyrians were against Israel. They always wanted to invade Israel. And later part, when we study the book of Micah, we can see how they come and invaded Israel, the northern part of Israel. So here we see, like uh, God is asking uh, Jonah to go and uh, go and uh, tell the people to repent and change, so that I can forgive them and save the nation. But Jonah was not ready to accept that fact. Because throughout, when we study the book of Kings, through our, or uh, even Chronicles, we see throughout the book that God uh, destroyed the enemy's kingdom. You know, uh, gave in Israel, uh, you know, Israel to go invade other kingdoms. But, uh, you know, never has seen that God forgave them. Uh, God wants to save those people. But this was something very new and, you know, he wants to run away from God. So he could not accept it. He wanted to go in a different direction. But God did not, uh, you know, allow that to happen. And then, even though Jonah turned away and he went to a different direction. Okay. Did God change his decision? Did God change his decision? Yes, ma'am. Changed his decision. Okay, what way is it? In what way did God said, okay, because uh, Jonah went to a different place, uh, that's okay, let the people of Nineveh stay like that. Or did he say, okay, if Jonah was not ready, I will raise another prophet, another man of God who can go and uh, do my work. What Jonah didn't do, I can ask somebody else to do in place of Jonah. Did God do it? No, ma'am. God sent Jonah himself only. God wants him to do his purpose. God wanted to change Jonah inside out. God wanted to show that he is God of mercy and love. We see uh, there are a few important scriptures here, key verses. Uh, uh, can I request one of us to please turn to Jonah chapter 2, verse 1? Can I request one of you to please read? From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. When I was in trouble, Lord, I prayed to you and you listened to me. From deep in the world of dead, I begged you for your help and you answered my prayer. Yes. Okay. Can we also uh, one of us please turn to Jonah chapter 2 verse 6? Jonah chapter, two verses six. Verses. Jonah chapter 2 verses 6 to the roots of the mountain I sank down the earth beneath buried me in forever but you bought my life up from the pit O Lord my God Jonah 2 9 Jonah 2 9 and the other take Jonah 4 10 to 11 Jonah 2 9. But I, with a song of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good. Salvations come from the Lord. Salvation comes from the Lord. And in 3 10, what does he say? When God saw that the people had stopped doing evil things, he had pity and did not destroy them as he planned. Amen. And Jonah 4, 10 to 11. 
Jonah 4, 10 to 11. But the Lord said, you have been concerned about this wine. Though you did not tend it or make it grow, it sprang up overnight and died overnight. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left and many cattle as well. Should I not be concerned about that great city? Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, when God sent Jonah to go to Nineveh and he disobeyed God and he went the other side. So after he boarded the ship, what happened? When he boarded the ship, there was a great storm. And the storm, uh, you know, uh, was so huge. Uh, you know, uh, uh, it was not subsiding. The men, uh, uh, men in the in the ship tried doing many things. Okay, uh, they threw the lives out to you know uh, to get the boat back. But things didn't go well. So what they did, they put lots to find out what is happening. And the Lord fell on Jonah because they believed on you know or they believed in the slots and it rightly fell on Jonah and Jonah knew what's happening. He, Jonah was fast asleep and all that he it was a great escape. He thought okay let me not be bothered what's happening around. Let me just escape. But when people told Jonah what was happening and the Lord fell on him, he agreed. He confessed it. He said, I'm running uh, you know, I'm running from the Creator God, the God who created from the Hebrew God. And he knew within him that he cannot escape anymore. And what he said is, you just throw me into this water. Now, why did you ask the people to throw him into the water? Did uh, uh, Jonah knew that there will be a party of God that he will save him miraculously, supernaturally from the water and he will be rescued and he will be taken to Nineveh? Is there any kind of repentance in his heart? Oh Lord, I made a mistake. I chose a different direction. Very sorry, forgive me. Uh, take, uh, take my soul and uh, you know save this people. Did he say something like that? And he said, oh, what happened? Why did Jonah say throw me into the water. We are all our leaders, so we, we, you can share your views. It will help us in our task. Was it easy to Jonah to convince the people around him to throw him into the water? Yeah, I think uh, uh, it was uh, basically Jonah knew that it was because of his sin uh, that this is happening. Yeah, so he was uh, also concerned of the fact uh, that there were other people in the ship who were praying to false gods. And yeah, he knew that God can save. Yes, as she also said, thanks to the very he was saying it's not very easy. And it was not easy for young people to throw him into the water. But here we see uh, the scripture gives a clear picture of what uh, was the uh, thought process in Jonah. But then he said, maybe I'm the cause. And because of me, I don't want uh, you know, other people's life to be in uh, stake. So just put me into the water and there will be an end to the storm. So the people took him and they put him into the water. But then the people were scared of the God. And when they put him into the water and they saw the storm stop immediately, there was calm in the sea. They prayed to the God of Israel. They said, God, let not this man's blood come and pass, for we are no sin. The, does it also remind us of something? Does this also remind us of something? Who prayed, let his blood do not come upon our hands? We remember conscious value. 
this way when Jesus uh, was going through the time of trial, saying uh, you know, when people were saying kill him, kill him, he also said uh, he's an innocent man. I don't see anything in him to put him to crucify him. So he washed his hand and he said, "Let his blood do not come upon me." There are some instances where the scholars relate Jonah's incidents with Jesus, the time of shadow, when they put Lord for Jonah, it fell, uh, it, sorry, when they put the Lord fell on Jonah, and here they put Jesus' clothes as a Lord. Many many scholars relate many things to Jesus, but Jesus himself related to him when Jonah was thrown into the water, God sent a big fish, big fish. The book of Jonah says big fish, but in the book of Matthew it says big whale. God sent a whale and swallowed Jonah. In Matthew 12, 40, it says that. It was a, he was in the whale's belly for three days and three nights. And Jesus also related to him and saying, so shall the Son of Man be inside the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. And Jonah woke up in the belly of the fish. And now, and now he's crying out to God, which didn't happen when he was in the ship when the storm hit. He didn't do anything. He was just watching everything what was happening around him. But something happened when he was inside the belly of the fish. He confessed his disobedience. And he told God that he would accomplish the task the Lord had called him to. You see, there's a change of heart. That which was stubborn, saying, Lord, I will not, I will go opposite direction of what you have told me. I will not go to that enemy land. I cannot take them being saved. And here, there's a change of heart in the, in the belly of the fish. Sometimes when it happens to us, there's a change of heart during a time of trial. And when, he, when it changed, when there was a transformation in Jonah's heart, we see that God had instructed the way to vomit Jonah exactly on the ground, the dry ground of Nineveh. After three days and three nights, he comes out the fish. And he is here directly in the land of Nineveh. To his amazement and also his disappointment. The people of Nineveh heard his message. They may not be okay. We just go and do what God is asking them to do. He went around telling the people, turn over, turn over, repent and turn over. The salvation of the Lord is at hand. If you don't repent, this is the punishment that, that will come upon you. He kept declaring it. And this news went to Surprise! Everyone listened or heeded the voice of this prophet. All these days, uh, when we were studying on the other books of the prophets, the major prophets we study, we studied the ma uh, minor prophets. They all were prophesying towards the people of Israel, and the more and more they prophesied, they cried like Jeremiah cried, Ezekiel demonstrated, and uh, we see Hosea, uh, he demonstrated in his life and declaring, uh, the, uh, declaring the people of Israel to repent and change so that God can forgive us and save us. But the people of Israel, you know, didn't show any kind of uh, uh, giving heed to the voice of these prophets. They ignored the impact of them to be a mad people around them. They never heeded the voice of what God was saying. Jonah thought maybe it would be something like that. Even uh, the people of Syrian would also react in the same way. But to his surprise, to his disappointment, these people listened. They heard the voice of this prophet. They believed on his word. Some of the scholars say that when Jonah was in the belly of the fish and he came to the scripture, they say, some scholars say that his appearance was different because of the acid that was present in the belly of the fish. And this made uh, people to believe what he was saying. 
yes, this is the Lord who's talking to us. That we need to repent, we need to listen to his word. And this, uh, you know, even the king of that place, and along with the king and the people, even the cattle repented. They also fasted and prayed, seeking God to forgive for their sins and save their land. And uh, after Jonah preached to the people, he goes, uh, uh, you know, he sits on top of the mountain to watch the Lord destroy the city. But then the Lord saw these people repent and ask for forgiveness. God did not destroy this uh, city, but then God forgave. The minute for God forgave them, you know, uh, Jonah was, uh, uh, was not very happy, he complained. And God wanted to teach a lesson to Jonah for not being very happy in saving uh, these people. Like God caused, as he was sitting on the mountain top to watch over, it was very hot. A scorching sun was hitting upon him. And here God caused a, a vine, a plant to grow within a night over him and then give him the shade from the sun in short time. And yet God also sent a worm to eat over the leaves from that vine, from the plant. And now again, the sun is hitting him. Jonah becomes very angry. Lord, so sad this plant. It just grew, it was fresh and nice, it was giving shade, and now this worm is eating up all this plant. So sad of this plant. He has the heart to feel for the plant, which do not have a soul. But then God is saying, Jonah, this plant do not have a soul, and you're feeling sad for this plant, which just, uh, you know, sprouted and raised and gave you a shade in the day, and then it went out in the night. You're feeling sad, you have a heart of concern for this plant, but not for the people who have a soul. Should I not be merciful toward them? I'm a God of all. I'm a God of this earth. I'm a God of all creation. Him the understanding. God gave him the understanding. Saying that I am the God of the Jew and also of the Gentile. He is the God of all. He is the God of all. So, yes, does not, uh, uh, the scripture does not give us a clear picture that Jonah was able to understand, he was able to accept the decision of God. And this is what God is bringing the news to you and me today. So what we learn from this book is first, sin is a sin. Because the scripture says the wages of sin is death. Which scripture is that? Can one of us read? Can one of us read that scripture? Uh, uh, yes, it is Romans six twenty three. Can I read? Yes, please, Tavia. Yeah. Romans six twenty three. Oh, yeah. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. See, the wages of sin is death. After that, what is it? but? But what is the next slide? The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. But the gift of God is eternal life. Though the wages of sin is death, the gift of God is the eternal life. So very clearly, uh, we see God telling God telling uh, Jonah that both Assyrians and Israelites needed a savior to save them. We all need a savior to save us. So this is what something that we need to learn, just not Jonah, even we, that we need Savior because the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is the eternal life. And that we get only through the Savior. So we all need Jesus. 
So when uh, when the people of Nineveh turned from their sin and turned to God, God's wrath subsided. And our sin qualifies, uh, you know, the complete destruction. But God, in His mercy, through Jesus Christ, He saves us. He gives us this eternal life in Christ. And we see another part here is no one can flee from God's plan. No matter how far we can run like Jonah, we cannot uh, uh, run away from God's plan. We, uh, you know, God yes, there is a call, there is a purpose in our life. And God will accomplish. Yes, even the time delays, but God will accomplish his purpose. Just like how God accomplished the purpose in Moses' life, in David's life. The same God says, no matter how far you can run, but you cannot run away from me. Where can, where can you hide yourself from God? David says, where can I hide, Lord, from your presence? Even if I go to the deep of the earth, you're there. In the heavens, you're there. Where can I hide? There's no way that we can run away like Jonah or hide. We cannot from the presence of God. God is everywhere. And the scripture also says that his eyes run to and four on this earth, seeking his children. God knows everyone. Scripture says even our, uh, the uh, even the uh, hair of our head has been numbered. Without his permission, it cannot fall. So accurate God knows about us. The very thought he knows, the very word, even before it could be formed on our mouth, he knows. So how can we run away from God's plan? We cannot. The third point is, looking at the Assyrians, we may think like, you know, okay, uh, the reason for their sin is death, and they need to be destroyed, and uh, God cannot forgive them. One thing we need to know is God is a God of second chance. God has a heart to forgive us. It's not that only after the death of Jesus, but from, from the beginning of this earth, it's a God is a God who wants to redeem his people, redeem his children. That's the reason time and again is raising the prophets, the servant of God, to proclaim, tell the people not to sin, repent so that he can forgive us. Even in the time of Moses, we see God gave the law to Moses, but at the same time when he gave the law, he also introduced the sacrifice. So that when whenever the law is introduced, the sin has been measured. Because God knows that man cannot keep his law. We will fall short. We need to overcome that. How? Through sacrifice. So there was a covering given for our sin. There, there should be a bloodshed. So that's the reason he introduced a sacrifice where the animal can be sacrificed for the covering of a sin. But later, but God had a plan of Jesus where once and for all, the wages of a sin can be paid through Jesus Christ our Lord. But there is a time. So till that time, he wants to save his people, redeem his people, protect his children. He is mindful of us. When the psalmist says that God, uh, we are the apple of his eye, truly we are the apple of his eye. And we see that no matter how far we have gone from the salvation, uh, God can bring us back. If God is concerned about the Assyrians, about the Gentiles, how much more will be concerned about us, his own children? The fourth point we see is uh, Jonah often gets a negative impression uh, from the other people uh, looking at his selfishness. But Jesus later attributes a sign to Jonah life plays a, a you know a latter role in Jesus' death and resurrection. Jesus took the example of this man. You see, no matter how much we be self-centered, we may have denied just like how Peter did. Even Peter denied Jesus. But then Jesus never changed his mind and saying, oh Peter, you, you denied me three times, so let me change a different person. Jonah, you ran away uh, from my plan, so let me uh, raise another leader so that you may uh, uh, learn a lesson that you missed the opportunity that came your way. God knows as a human, he knows our weakness, he knows our strength, he's a God of understanding. Even in our selfishness, even in our, uh, you know, a fear, a weakness, whatever we may be, 
God chooses us and he raises us to fulfill his call, his purpose in our life. As we study in Minister's Foundation, the very first book, Fulfilling God's Purpose in Our Life, he says, both of us should cooperate, God and we. God is always cooperating. It's only we. We need to work our part to cooperate in him, with him so that we can accomplish his or his purpose in our life. We need to be ready. We should not run away like Jonah, but then we need to be ready because any which way God will fulfill his plan, his purpose in our life. But then it becomes much easier for both of us when we cooperate. So jo the book of Jonah teaches us so much about the patience of God, the perseverance of God, the love and care that God has on the nation at the same time on the individual. I think more than the nation, God had to, you know, put up with the uh, with Jonah to make him understand. Today, you and I are in the same way. I don't know about you, but me, I am in the same way. God comes to my level to teach me the way I can understand. He talks to me in the way that I can understand. He teaches me through simple things around me the way that I could understand. God would have to do that, isn't it? But then he chooses to do that because of the free will that is given to man. We may not comprehend to his wisdom, but then he humbles himself to teach us in the way we can understand. How amazing God is, isn't it? The God in the New Testament way, uh, Jesus said, well, I leave the 99, I run behind that one. It is so true in Jonah's life and in our life. Today, each of us are here. We all have a story to share. Just like Jonah in different areas, maybe we have ran away. We have, uh, you know, we have gone very far from God. But then God ran behind us, restored us back to him. And here he is nurturing us every day. As you all are the student, and I'm a student in this class. It's the Lord who's our teacher. He teaches us. As I teach, it's not that I know everything from the Bible. No, I'm just learning like you. Every day as I prepare to teach, God teaches me. And everywhere I see the heart of God, the love, the compassion that God has towards his children, towards us, towards his people. And it questions me, am I uh, carrying the same kind of love? Because we need to reflect God's love. Are we reflecting in our life? Are we having the mindset of God in the same way where we can show his, li uh, his love towards people? Can we change our mind? Can we change our heart? Are we hardened our heart and mind just like Jonah, like how God can forgive and bless other people when they have wronged? Or are we having a heart like God, thinking big? Even when Jesus was crucified on the cross, Jesus said, Lord, forgive them for they do not know what they do. And the same reflection we see, uh, the same kind of love flowed. Even uh, the first martyr, Stephen, was stoned. Even he looked up to God. He never stoned. Him. He is not looking at the people who are stoning him to kill him. But he's looking at God and he's smiling with joy and he's saying, Lord, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. Do we have the heart like them? This is what is God's love is. Are we reflecting God's love in our heart? Are we showcasing that in our life to our people, to our family, to our brothers around us? Is a question. So the book of Jonah is asking us to carry the heart of God. So with this, we'll move on to the next book, my God. We have taken a lot of time and we can go on and on talking about the book of Jonah. But then we should also go to the book of Micah. Give me a minute. Yeah. So the book of Micah, the name Micah is a short form of Hebrew, which means who is like the eternal? Who is like the eternal? It seems to be a reference to his name in uh, Micah 7, 18, that he is the author. And his name means who is God like you, pardoning iniquity. The God who forgives our sins. And beyond. And the book of Micah is the sixth book of the 12 minor prophets. And uh, it was written by Micah himself. And the first, the first 
much in this book identifies that he is the author and uh, and he's from this place called Morishet Gap. Verse 14 says that uh, he lived in a town called Morishet Gap and uh, Morishet was a town in Judah located a little uh, about 20 miles southwest of city of Jerusalem. And this was very close to where the prophet Isaiah grew and uh, which may have experienced similarities between their prophecies. And Micah was known uh, by the name over 100 years later during the time of Jeremiah. Then certain of the elders of the land rose up and spoke to all the assemblies of people saying, Micah of Moshet prophesied with David as the king of Judah and spoke to all the people of Judah. And Jeremiah, uh, in the book of Jeremiah, we read, uh, if you see uh, chapter uh, chapter 12 to 15, we see that how people uh, raised uh, to kill Jeremiah for prophesying the doom of the Lord to Judah and uh, if they don't repent. And there was an outcry. And there were other people also supported Jeremiah not to kill him because uh, they related Micah's uh, uh, message. It is like uh, Micah lived before him and he was prophesying again the doom of the Lord. But people, uh, and he, Micah very directly he was prophesying. He said, uh, Guys, if y'all don't repent, yeah, I, I, I use the local language. Guys, people of Israel, if y'all don't repent, if you all don't uh, change, transform, and if you all continue to do this idol worship, and if you all uh, keep uh, uh, drinking and you know or doing, uh, getting immo uh, involved in the immorality or the sexual sin, God will punish you. The day of the Lord is at hand. And when Micah prophesied, you know, uh, you also. Uh, uh, they didn't, uh, people, yes, uh, they, they listened to him, but they were scared to kill him. But when Jeremiah prophesied the same thing to the people of Judah, they were about to kill Jeremiah. But then the other people, you know, uh, reminded, uh, some of the elders reminded, how can we kill him when there was another prophet also shared the message in a similar way. Uh, if we have spared him, then we should also spare Jeremiah. So they related Micah's prophecy and they spared the life of Jeremiah so that he can live. So uh, this way, uh, they were reasoning out uh, in those days. They were comparing and reasoning out. So uh, Micah, uh, the prophet Micah, lived and prophesied during the 8th century, that is 700 BC. And um, he was talking, he, he prophesied during the king of Jotham, Ahaz, King Ezekiah, Judah, during that time. And he actually uh, saying, uh, uh, you know, he prophesied on the millennium of Christ. Uh, he also prophesied on the location of Christ for the born in Bethlehem in, uh, in Jerusalem. And the three uh, characteristics that God wants to see. Uh, in our life, and uh, that's what Micah was prophesying to the people, saying that there is a justice, and when there's a justice, there's also mercy and hope. So he was clearly mentioning that to the people. So uh, in chapter one, we see the judgment is announced against Israel and Judah, and uh, in chapter two to three, we see Micah announces God's judgment of the false prophets the rich and the powerful of the sin and the evil ways, if they don't repent, there is a judgment because the wages of sin is death. And this very clearly. And uh, they all, uh, like, you know, uh, they consider there was a lot of other false prophets and they were encouraged to make the people not listen to the voice of prophets, the actual prophets. And in chapter 4 to 5, we see the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. It's talking about the reign of Jesus Christ, where the judgment will come upon the enemies of Israel. And in chapter 6, we see God causes against Israel impending sorrow and punishment for their sins. God causes, uh, God uh, causes against Israel. And he is saying uh, impending sorrow and punishment for their sins. And in chapter 7, we talk about 
future forgiveness upon Israel. When they confess and forsake their sin, they will be saved. And they can live in peace. Also, in the book of Micah, uh, you know, the prophet says, uh, when they, uh, when the peace and the God's peace is there, they will forget about the wars that happen. They will not be talking about it in the time of millennium. And uh, in chapter three, verse eight, Micah says, "I'm filled with strength, with the spirit of God." Just the power to declare how Israel has rebelled. So it was not very easy for Micah to prophesy directly to people. He knew that he put his life in the mess. His people will stone him, people will kill him to death. But then the Spirit of the Lord was upon him and he was strengthened to declare what was happening. Yes, Micah accused them and he warned them about God's judgment upon Israel. And at the same time, when we are studying, yes, the prophets are sent to give them the warning. Tell them there is a judgment for your sin. But at the same time, God is also giving them the message of hope. If you repent, if you turn away from your sin, there is forgiveness, there is a message of this is the gospel. This is the good news. And even today, we take this good news and share with others. Yes, we all need a savior. Just like what Jonah is saying. Just like what Micah is saying to the people. The human mind are called to be that mouthpiece. It's not that we have to be any of the five calling five ministry that either, you know, the... Uh, it's not that we need to be an apostle or a prophet or an evangelist or a pastor or a teacher. But then God is saying, if you are a believer, if you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and you have accepted him, you have encountered him, you have tasted the goodness of God, then we are supposed to share this joy, share the good news with others. So just like Jonah, just like Micah, God is asking us, can you be my mouthpiece? As the scripture says, the harvest is huge, but the laborers are few. God is raising laborers today. Each one of us in this class are not just an attendee here. We are not attending, we're not part of this college to receive a certificate and relax or just be content and changing ourselves. Even that was my thought as well. As I say this to you, even my thought, Lord, I will only focus on myself and I'll only change myself. I see that I will uh, lead my way in the way it pleases you. But please do not ask me to share your word to anyone. This was my prayer. The Lord taught me in a hard way that this is not what God wanted from me and this is not what God, did, uh, God has touched me or saved me to, uh, to focus just on me. The minute I realized, I surrendered to God and said, Lord, change me. Give me the grace. Give me the strength. You put your words into my mouth. Because you know my weakness that I cannot speak in front of anyone. If I don't know a person, then the words won't flow. If there's a, a number of people, I cannot speak to everyone. It would be like, oh, I don't know the language. Words won't just flow in a sentence. None of the language would I speak in front of anyone. Yes, I also face a challenge when we move to online. I cannot speak in front of a camera. Not just now, even before. There were a lot of challenges. Just like me, each one in the class may have your own challenges in different ways. Just like Jonah, we may run away. But here the book of Micah is saying, I was strengthened by the Spirit of the Lord. When we seek God, when we are willing to say, Lord, if you have brought this far, you will give me the grace to overcome my weakness. You will give me the grace to teach and share your word. Because this is your call. This is your purpose. You will put your words in my mouth. You did with the prophets. So you should. They trusted God and they stepped in. 
my god trust god and we boldly proclaim the word of god and people heard may not be everyone but then people heard today you and i beyond our weakness and uh, beyond our weaknesses when uh, when we trust god god will give us the strength those days the spirit of the lord is to visit them but now the spirit of the lord is abiding within us forever we have the spirit of the lord and the spirit of the lord strengthened mica how much more the spirit of the lord can strengthen us because we have jesus with us the spirit of the lord is indwelling within us. never leave us and he is abiding with us forever so we have the privilege we have the opportunity to be more strengthened and forever and god is a promise keep of he keeps his promise he will speak in and through us he can change your situation if your situation is a barrier he can change that situation no matter what obstacle be on there the minute we surrender to god we see god's call and purpose being accomplished in our life the only call that we have is for us to share this word of god share the good news to people so that they can be saved the greatest miracle is not the healing not the deliverance not the comforting those who are oppressed no the greatest miracle is when the soul is saved because that is when they have rejoice as the scripture says and the heaven rejoice when one soul is been saved if god can take so much of risk in you know uh, getting jonah from the ship and taking him to the fish belly and then taking him to the ship If God can raise Micah to boldly declare the word of God, the judgment is coming. Save, repent. So asking you and me today to do that in our world, in our time. God wants us in the name of Jesus to step out, go share the good news to the people that Jesus died on the cross for you and me. and he is mindful of us when we believe in jesus we have eternal life with him this is the good news don't worry about other person's understanding don't worry about any none of us but what we know we can share the gospel what we know what we experience that's what the disciples did what they know they lived with jesus whatever they heard and saw jesus do they did In fact, Jesus says, "You shall do great and mighty things than what I have done." And we see people moving in that area. We can only move in that area only when we step out. We cannot ask God, "God, give me the power first, then I'll move." No, God says, "You step and you see me work in and through you." Let's in faith seek God. But before that, I'll open up to the class. We are crossed our time. I leave it open. Uh, is there anything that you would like to share, talk from these two books that we studied today? And we can go to the time of prayer. Your John, Brother Isaac, anything you would like to add? Um, I'm good, Pastor Dana. Thank you. Okay. John, can you lead us in prayer? Sure, definitely. Let's pray. <clears throat> Gracious Lord, we want to thank you for this time. Lord, we submit once again ourselves and thank you for reminding us the importance of being obedient in your presence, O oh God. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that in every circumstances, help us to be obedient to you, your word, your uh, what your Spirit leads us, Lord, and help us to uh, give utmost importance to your word, as we are just being a messenger to uh, share your word to um, the people around us, God, and help us to be humble. Help us not not to take any pride in anything that we are doing. And we also uh, thank you for the learning 
that we had uh, from the book of Micah, Lord Jesus, that we pray, oh God, that um, let's have that uh, uh, attitude uh, of being uh, so vulnerable in your presence and um, and pray, oh God, that we would be able to execute what you want us to do in this world, oh God. Help us to deliver the message of hope um, to the people around us and pull people from every hopelessness to your marvelous light, Lord Jesus. Help each one of us to stand, uh, to stay on the course, oh God. And we pray that um, uh, you would enable us to do it and let your Holy Spirit work in us in a powerful way, Master. Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for Pastor Diana to help her to uh, deliver this word to us, Master. We give you glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining today's session. And uh, yeah, uh, tomorrow we will not have session. We can uh, meet next week. Okay, so Wednesday we will not have class because uh, we completed the portion code of honor. You can continue to do your assignment. We will meet next Monday. Okay? Sure, Basta. Thank you. Okay, thank you. God bless. Thank you.